This video is sponsored by Cadeco.com. Hey, what's up everyone? Vegetarian Zombie here and welcome back to another episode of Beginning C Sharp with Unity. In this episode, we're going to review everything that we've done so far and take a look at what's coming down the pipe. That said, if you're new to this channel or you're dipping your toes in the water, my name is Vegetarian Zombie and on this channel you can find lots of videos on game development, game tutorials, and the occasional playthrough. I also write articles on jesner.com and I'm pretty active on mastodon.social. If you find these videos useful, please consider subscribing to the channel as it goes a long way to help me out. Okay, with all that said, let's turn our attention to C Sharp. Congratulations if you've made it this far. Believe it or not, you know all the main fundamentals of the language. The hardest part of your journey is over. If you've never written a line of code before, you are now reading and writing code and getting that code to work inside of Unity. This is amazing. And hopefully, you've discovered that it wasn't really that hard. But did you ever think about what code actually is? Let's take a moment to pause and reflect. You see, code is just shorthand instructions. It's actually not even meant for computers. Code is meant to be read by other humans. This sounds strange, but the code we write is incomprehensible to computers. Computers work by way of electrical signals. We manipulate these signals through a physical electrical process, but that's really hard to think about, so we create a simple language that allows us to think and reason at that level. This is why obscure, really hard to read code is not a good thing. It makes it harder for us to understand, which thus makes it easier to introduce bugs. And here's the thing, you can write the best looking code, but at the end of the day, no one is going to notice it except when things go wrong. So code is essentially shorthanded messages to the computer. It's designed to be concise without any ambiguity. But what about C Sharp? What the heck kind of language is that? Well, C Sharp is part of the .NET framework produced by Microsoft. .NET is just a framework. Instead of writing code that works on a specific computer or a specific operating system, you write it to work on .NET instead. This means your code will work on any computer that runs .NET, which originally was just Windows computers, but now it runs on Mac OS, Linux, Android, and others. When you create a new c -sharp file, all you are doing is creating a new text file. We use the extension .cs, but it's no different from any other text file you may create on your desktop. Visual Studio Code is designed to understand these files and gives us tools to write them, but at the end of the day, you can write your c -sharp code in any old text editor. After we write our code, we compile it. Compiling is when the computer goes through our code and translates it into an intermediary language known as CIL. This is what is used by .NET. CIL stands for Common Intermediate Language. It's very low level designed for granular operations. When we run our game inside of Unity, our c -sharp code is translated into this language, which is then converted into machine language which the computer can understand. The reason .NET is so useful with Unity is that it allows us to run our games on multiple platforms. Now, if this is too confusing, don't worry. You don't need to know any of this stuff, especially starting out. I just wanted to provide a little context under the covers. Okay, let's review the language features you learned so far, but before we do that, here's an ad from my sponsor, Kadeco.com. Kadeco is a website that aims to teach coding by actually coding. From videos, articles, and even live boot camps, Kadeco will jumpstart your development career. Throughout the years, a lot of you have reached out to me about my teaching style. I try to be open and accessible to all skill levels, and I think I've been successful. That's the result of having worked with Kadeco for the last 10 years. I'm actually the first employee. I started my journey with Kadeco back when it was known as RayWinderlich.com, building up the website and as an article editor. Then I grew the Unity team over there and spent the following years creating video tutorials on a whole variety of subjects. Now I manage both the Flutter and Android teams. These teams are composed of passionate developers like you. They've learned the topic, mastered it, and now they teach other developers. 
I learned all my techniques and skills from the developers on the Kadeco teams and by learners like you. We learn, we practice, and we teach. We do so in a friendly, supportive manner. We aren't judges, we're coaches looking to take your skills to the next level. That's the ethos of Kadeco and what I do. So if you like this course and you are looking to explore a related field in technology, head over to Kadeco.com. It's the same teaching style, and who knows, in a couple of years, I'll be working with you on your own Unity course. All right, you started learning C Sharp working with variables. Each variable represents a piece of data. And as you know, each data must be a certain type. For example, some data represents an integer. Another piece of data represents text. Every variable must be a type, and there are no exceptions to this rule. Types allow us to work with the correct data. It's important because if you are doing an operation on an incorrect type, that will crash your game. For example, what happens if you try to uppercase an integer? That's undefined behavior, and the computer will not know what to do. Thus, the program ends. Now, this crashing is actually a good thing. It lets us know when something has gone horribly wrong. We can then track down the exact location of the issue and fix it. So yes, crashes are annoying, but corrupted user data is far, far worse. Another thing to consider is that variable types can't change. Once a string, always a string. If you try to change a type, you'll get an error. This is different from a language like JavaScript, whereby you can change types on the fly. Changing types is known as dynamically typed, whereas fixed types are known as statically typed. Thus, C Sharp is a statically typed language. Statically typed languages help you catch bugs as you write programs, as well as provide performance optimizations. That said, we do have some tricks up our sleeves to get some advantages of dynamically typed language. You'll learn about these techniques pretty soon. Now, there are two kinds of variable. One is a normal mutable variable that's value can be changed. The other is called a constant, which means its value cannot be adjusted. We use the const modifier to mark variables as constants. Constants are really important. If something shouldn't change, then set it to a constant. That's an easy way for you to prevent bugs. Let's take the freezing point of water. In a program, you'd set that to 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius and make it a constant because if that variable changes, you get a lot of weird behavior. Also, the compiler will optimize code for constants, making it faster. You also learned about operators. Operators allow us to make changes in a variable. There are lots of different operators in C Sharp that works on specific data types. And here's the crazy thing. You have the ability to define your own operators as well. For example, here I have two vector2 types. A vector2 is a type of unity data type that holds the position of an xy value on a grid. You can add them together. This is all done by the unity developers overloading the plus operator. Then you learned about null, the lack of a value. This really comes into play with objects as you'll see soon enough. After you learned about defining variables, you next learned about logic. Logic is key for creating branching and dynamic games. You'll be using the if statement all over the place. Now you can also use a switch statement that provides different logic options. Typically, I mostly use if statements and very rarely use a switch statement. In other languages, switch statements provides a performance improvement. Game developer Terry Cavanaugh took advantage of switch statements and basically wrote the logic of his popular game V in a massive switch statement consisting of thousands of lines of code. This is something you generally want to avoid, at least until you know what you are doing. Follow the rules first, then redefine them once you understand the stakes. Then I introduced you to your first collection type, the array. Arrays are incredibly useful for a whole variety of reasons. One great use of an array is to store the player's inventory in it, but really you'll be using them for everything in game dev. The array is a basic collection for storing objects. You'll be exploring other collections as well. Finally, we closed out with loops. Loops are critical in any programming language, but especially in games. We often talk about the core game loop, the tasks that the player must do over and over in a game, but we also have the actual game loop itself, 
That is where all the tasks the computer must do in a given frame from updating the player's location to moving items on the screen. These are all done in loops. When writing loops, you'll oftentimes write loops inside of loops. This is known as nesting, and you run into it all the time. So that's everything so far. But things are about to get interesting. You are about to dive into the world of object-oriented programming. By using objects, you unlock the power of the language and really unlock the power of Unity itself. I just want to take a moment to remind you that once you complete the second half of this course, you still won't be able to write a game just yet. You need to learn the Unity API. The Unity API contains all the objects that the Unity developers have created for us to use in code. Learning the API takes some time, but this is actually much easier to learn since you'll be actually making games as you do so. On the other hand, learning C Sharp is not as exciting, but by focusing just on the language, you're learning how everything works. You're doing the hard part now. The fun stuff comes soon. And here's the thing, you don't need to know every single thing about C Sharp. You're looking to understand enough to be productive. In time, with daily practice and additional study, you'll achieve mastery. Well, that's all there is to this episode. In the next episode, we're going to start playing with objects. And that's where the fun begins. So take a break, grab a drink, and I'll see you in the next one. Catch you then.